Hi, my name is Jane Prescott Smith. I'm a member of St. Phillips in the Hills Episcopal Church and a leader with Pima County Interfaith. And hi, I'm Nancy Smith, and I'm also a leader in Pima County Interfaith, and I worship at St. Pius X Catholic Community in Tucson. Pima County Interfaith consists of a number of faith-based and community organizations whose representatives are everyday citizens just like us, learning how to take action on issues that are important to our families and neighborhoods. We intentionally take a broad-based relational approach to work across racial, religious, and political lines. During this time when we are living with the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting economic crisis, a major concern for many is the fear of losing their home because of an inability to make rent or mortgage payments. This session will help you deal with this risk by providing you with the information you need to navigate this stressful time. We'll begin by covering the rights and responsibilities of renters and share some information about the types of rental assistance that exist. Then we'll move on to talk about help for homeowners. You have probably heard that Governor Ducey issued an executive order in March to help prevent renters who have been affected by the COVID-19 to keep them from being evicted. He did this for the purpose of protecting public health. Does this mean that my landlord can't bring an eviction action against me? Well, it's important to understand that this executive order does not stop eviction orders. Landlords can still seek a judgment and a judge can still sign an eviction order. However, you may be able to delay the eviction for as long as the executive order is in force, which is July 22nd, if you meet the requirements. Specifically, if you have to be quarantined due to COVID-19, or if you are at high risk for becoming infected with COVID-19, or if you have suffered substantial loss of income due to COVID-19, you may be covered under this executive order. So Jane, is there something I have to do in order to keep from being evicted? Yes, in order to delay your eviction, it's critical to inform your landlord in writing that you will not be able to pay your rent due to COVID-19 circumstances. There's a link on this slide where you can find a sample letter. It's important to get this letter to your landlord as soon as possible and to keep copies of the letter because if a constable comes to your door, you will need to provide him or her with a copy of the letter. In Arizona, landlords are not allowed to self-evict. They must follow due process in justice court. If despite having followed these guidelines, you find yourself locked out of your home, immediately contact Southern Arizona Legal Aid. So Nancy, do you think Pima County has gotten the message? Are they complying with Governor Ducey's executive order? Yes, they are. Uh, the Pima County Justice Court is paying attention to Governor Ducey's order and has delayed routine evictions until July 22nd. The county constables are working with renters to assist in the process of applying for aid. The situation with evictions is changing all the time. Be alert, talk to your landlord, and talk to the court if you need to. So it's important to keep in mind, the executive order does not prevent evictions that are unrelated to COVID-19. If you and your family are healthy and working, this executive order does not provide you with any protection. So will I still have to pay my rent eventually? Yes. Unfortunately, the executive order does not provide for any rent forgiveness. You'll still have to pay all the back rent and possibly late fees when the executive order is lifted. So you need to plan for that now by paying as much of your rent as you can each month and seeking rental assistance, which we'll talk about in a minute. In the meantime, talk to your landlord, work out payments that work for both of you so you don't get too far behind on your rent. So how is this all gonna work when the executive order is lifted? Well, that's a big question, Mark Nancy. The order is silent about how we will return to the normal state of affairs. We're hoping there will be further direction coming from the governor's office. But in the meantime, you might want to have a discussion with your landlord about arranging a payment plan that will allow you to stay in your rental while catching up on your back rent. 
Jane, can you tell me about this rental assistance plan that you mentioned? And we might have to check that out. The Arizona Department of Housing has set up a rental assistance program to help renters who can't afford to make their monthly payments because of a loss of income due to COVID-19. The program is operated through local community action agencies. There are a number of requirements and the application requires documentation like bank statements in your rental agreement. All the details can be found at the link on this slide. Be prepared. The application process may seem difficult, but the good news is that there is a hotline that you can call to get help with the application. Call 724-2505. And how much money can I get, Jane? Well, if you meet the requirements, the program will calculate what 30% of your monthly income is. It will subtract that from your monthly rent payment. The program will pay the difference directly to your landlord, so be sure to let your landlord know you are applying. And don't delay, because applications are reviewed in the order that they are received. If approved, you will need to reapply each month with updated information. But Nancy, doesn't Pima County also have a rental assistance program? Uh, yes, they do. Uh, they have limited assistance and the application process is burdensome. Also, only citizens may qualify for this aid. Applications are done by appointment only at the number on the screen. If you have already, already received rental aid from somewhere else, you must disclose this and the amount that you receive will be used to calculate the amount of aid that you get. And I think I heard that Tucson also might have rental assistance coming. Yes, some of the money the city received in COVID relief funds has been allocated for direct assistance to families and workers under the We Are One or Somos Uno program. The application process is still being worked out as of today, which is May the 31st, and they hope to take applications starting about June 9th. Contact your ward office for more information and watch for details on the news and in the paper. Thanks, Nancy. Now we'll turn to what homeowners need to know about servicing their mortgages. Nancy, is there any way for me as a homeowner to request financial assistance? Well, in fact, there is. The Save Our Home Arizona program is administered by the Arizona Department of Housing and funded by the U.S. Treasury. It assists with mortgage affordability by making payments directly to the lender on behalf of the homeowner. Payments are calculated as the difference between a third of household income and the monthly mortgage payment. Help is available on mortgages less than half a million dollars for households that don't exceed the maximum income qualification. Start by talking to your mortgage servicer. You can probably find a phone number or email on your monthly statement as the lender must agree to participate in the program. You know, I'm not sure I need cash assistance. What if I just need a little time until we can all get back to work? Well, that's where the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security or CARES Act comes in. It puts in place protections for homeowners with federally backed mortgages. For the record, about two thirds of all residential mortgages are federally backed, as are the mortgages of many of our landlords. There's a great deal of information about this topic at the Consumer Financial Protection Agency's website. If you are experiencing financial hardship due to the coronavirus pandemic, you have a right to request forbearance for up to 180 days, and you can request an extension for up to another 180 days. Forbearance is when your mortgage servicer or lender allows you to stop or reduce your mortgage payments for a limited period of time while you regain your financial footing. Now, you must contact, contact your loan servicer to request this forbearance. There will be no additional fees, penalties, or additional interest, probably beyond what's already scheduled, added to your account. You do not need to submit additional documentation to qualify other than your claim to have pandemic-related financial hardship. Forbearance does not mean your payments are forgiven or erased. 
So make sure you understand how the forbearance is going to be repaid before you agree. Thanks, Nancy. And thank you everyone for joining us for this presentation. If you have a story to share about receiving rental or mortgage assistance, please tell us about it at our Pima County Interfaith website. We wish you good luck as you work through the process of keeping your home. Bye now.